I do want you to know that as you go to make this project, that I have included all of the measurements that you're going to need, not only for the main part of the card, for the cardstock, they're all here, but also for your mats and layers. And I'm gonna give you an example. So I am counting this as number one, and it will have also a piece of four by four whisper white cardstock, and then a piece of three and three fourths by three and three fourths designer series paper. Then number two, it has the frame from the Memories and More Come Sail Away pack and an embellishment. Number three, has a three and three fourths by three and three fourths piece cut from the memories and more. Sailboat is in the right hand side. Next one, number four. And I do write here in the description what it is because as you're opening it up, you would think, well, how can that be number four? It doesn't look like number four but it's the next biggest one. So I do write down here, so you'll know it's the pattern paper with the ropes. It is three and three fourths by three and three fourths. Then this one here, it is three and one half by two inches of a pattern paper, and then two and three fourths by one and a fourth whisper white with the sentiment stamped on it, both corner rounded so you can see that. And so on and so forth. Just real quick, next one, three and a half by three inch, happy Father's Day, cut from the Memories and More card pack. So again, every single measurement that you will need to make this card will be in the description box. I hope that helps. This is a Father's Day card that I made for my son-in-law. And I also made the box. It closes with a Velcro strip. Here is the card. It ties shut with a little bow. It is called a maze card. And the reason is it just is almost like a never ending card. It just continues and continues. So there's the front. Then there is the next one. It just keeps folding up and over. Oops. So then that would fold over that way, then down, then over, then again up, over, down, and finally ending over on that side. So it's a fun card to make. All of the dimensions are in the description box. And it actually is a very easy card to make because basically all you're doing is gluing different size squares on top of each other. And then it fits nicely into this little envelope here. So I hope you enjoy making it. So let's get started. Now this is what you're going to need to make this maze card. And don't worry about these measurements here. 
you will be able to copy and paste them from the description down below on the YouTube video. So what you're going to do is cut all of these. We're gonna do our first one. It is eight and a half, and we're gonna score at four and a quarter. So basically what you're doing is making a bunch of squares. Then our next one is eight inches by four. We're gonna score it four inches. Next one, Mossy Meadow, seven and a half by three and three fourths. And we are going to score at three and three fourths. So just at the halfway mark. Next one is seven by three and a half. We're gonna score at three and a half. Next one is six and a half by three and one fourth, score at three and one fourth. And just continue on. Again, don't worry about the measurements. All of the measurements will be down in the description box that you will be able to copy and paste. So I'm going to speed up the video a little bit from this point until we're ready to start the next step. And so now you're just going to fold and burnish all of your score lines. going to start with our first card and it will open up like this and what I'm going to do with these is lay them down so I have them in order I want to put them right here and I think I'm going to put my little thing on top of it so they don't go flipping off so you're going to take your first one you're going to want to open your card like this and you're going to want this one to come down this way so you're going to put glue on the back back here So then you have a nice border all the way around. Then you're gonna open it up, take your next one, and you're gonna want it to open up that way. So you're gonna take your glue, put it on the back, Now, when you open it up, you want this one to open up back that way. So again, take your glue. With each layer, you are gonna go from the largest to the next size, to the next size down, and the next size down. 
each one will have an alternating color. Make sure you double check the orientation of your card prior to gluing it down. And as you can see, I double check it a couple of times. If you get confused, just pause the video, rewind it, and watch it again. You can always decrease the amount of layers you use. I'm using 11. You could use 5 or 6, whatever you want. So from this point on, I'm going to fast forward the video. I'm going to put on a little music and eat some chocolate and I will connect back with you in a minute or so. So now that the book is made, I'm going to start embellishing it and decorating it. But I'm not going to bore you with all of that because it will take some time. But I do want to just show you that each page I'm adding something. And for a lot of these things, I am using the Memories and More card pack that comes sail away. Which if I hold it up close, you can see there's a lot of cardstock, paper, stickers, embellishments. And let me just show you real quick. Now, I have cut into this and already used a lot of this, so I don't have a lot left. But these are all self-adhesive they already have the sticker on them and just real quick 
this right here is what I used for this border right here. So all you have to do is peel it up. It already has adhesive on the back and you lay it down and then just cut it off. So I'm gonna continue decorating this and I may stop here and there, film a little bit, but I will show you the end product in a little bit. Okay, once again, I'm just gonna show you real quick. These were stickers here, stickers. I cut this out of the memories and more. And just to show you just how quick you can decorate something is, that's a sticker, pull it off, lay it down, and it's adhered. So I always buy these memories and more card packs. So I'm gonna continue decorating it and I will show you the end product in a minute. So my card is completely decorated and it is quite bulky, which is fine because I'm gonna show you how to make a box for it. This will be a card that will be hand delivered, even though I suppose you could post it. But because it is very bulky, I thought I might add some of our Baker's Twine from the collection and one of these little charms. And I wish I had thought about it before because what I would have done is laid this down underneath these layers but I've come up with a solution. So what I'm gonna do is have it running this way. So what I've done is glued down two strips, or I will, two strips of four and a quarter by a half an inch. Then I put some double-sided tape here, and that's gonna hold down the ribbon, this is one eighth inch double-sided tape. And I'm gonna make sure that I have a long enough strip. So I'm just gonna lay that there. And then I'm gonna take this and glue it over it so that it's hidden. It's hanging over a little bit here, but that's okay because I can trim that off. It's not much as I open it up. I can just trim a little bit there and a little bit on the other side. Hopefully without cutting that string. Ah, wouldn't that be horrible? It looks like we need to cut a little bit here on this edge too. So what I'm doing is just taking a little bit of my art glitter glue with a fine tip point and just squeezing that underneath there along the whole edge. And then I'll be able to hold that down. And because it dries clear, if some of it oozes out, it'll be okay. It's gonna hold it in place eventually. <laughs> oh. So I want the uh, little anchor to be about there. So what I'm going to do is take this and tie a knot in it so that it doesn't move. Just bring this up or now I've already stuck it down on the bottom. Rats, now what do I do? 
I should have just had that hanging there with a piece of, uh, no, I wanted to keep it closed. See, I'm trying to figure this out as, <laughs> as I'm filming this. Oh, heavens. Do you guys do that? This kind of thing? I know you do when you're figuring out a card or how you're going to decorate it. <laughs> it's the fun of the, the whole process, isn't it? Then it flips over. Stop it! <laughs> okay, I have to turn off the, the camera until I sort this out. <laughs> okay, I figured it out. What helps is having the bow tied lower as opposed to up here because then that covered the anchor. So I think it looks quite nice. And you see how I have a little bit of glue here? What you wanna do is take one of these glue erasers and after the glue dries, you just run it across there and it removes it. So now I'm gonna get started on making the box and I will include that in this tutorial so you have a nice box to present your card in. Yeah, looks nice. And then I'll show you the whole project. This is my one, two, three punch board from We Are Memory Keepers. It has this little arm here that pulls out. So when you're making a larger envelope or box, it doesn't, when you're scoring, it doesn't fall off of your uh, punch board. So I have decided to use this paper here and either side would be great. And it is, how big was this? It is eight and five eighths by eight and five eighths. And so what you're going to do is First, punch, add, and score at three and five-eighths, which is right here. It shows you right here on the scoreboard. So you punch and you score. It might be a little difficult to see it here. And then so that it will be a box, then you also want to punch and score at five and one sixteenth. And five and one eighth would probably be okay too, but I just put it just a little bit past the five and just before the one eighth. So punch and score again. Then I turn my paper all the way around to the other side and do the same thing. So three and five eighths, and then five and one sixteenth. You're gonna punch and score two different areas. Then for the other sides, what you need to do is you take each of these little corners that are rounded and you lay them in the groove here of your punch board. So do you see how I have laid that right in there? And that's where you're gonna punch and score. And then you're gonna do the same thing with this one. So I'm gonna bring it up and I wanna make sure that you guys can see. So I'm gonna bring that forward a little bit. And so do you see how I've lined that one up right there? So I'm gonna punch and score again. Then I'm gonna turn it around and do the other side. So again, line up, and it doesn't matter if you do this one first or this one first. You're just gonna end up doing both of them. So I'm gonna line it right up here Punch and score. And then I'm going to do it with this one here. So I'm going to bring it down to that 
one area there. And then what we're going to do is round these corners off here. So you just lay it in your score or your punch board. Did that round good? Let me try it again. Yeah. Then you're going to fold and burnish all your score lines, which should be two on each side. Then I turn it over and I look to see, so I want this to be the front of the box. So then this part is gonna be the bottom. So I turn it over and what you're going to do is cut up both of these lines right here. So bring it up and cut along that score line up to the first score line on both sides. So then when you fold it up, this is going to come inward. Look, some glue there. <laughs> Stuck to me. This is going to come in and form your box. Now, I'm going to hold it in place just to make sure it fits first before I completely glue it in. Yay! it does okay perfect so you have created these two tabs here and then these tabs here I'm going to first just cut up the score line but I actually may remove the whole thing we'll see it depends on how sturdy the box is so again same thing there but again, you want to make sure that you glue your box so that the orientation is correct. This is better. This is a better orientation. Okay, so lay it down and you're going to bring these flaps up and in. And I'm going to use my good old Beacons 3-in-1 glue. So apply some glue here on the outside edge and you're going to bring it in and do a right hand corner or angle and hold it there. Look at that string. <laughs> and just hold it there for just a minute while that adheres. And you could, if you wanted to, just go in because this is a little bit thicker box. I'm able to go in there and push down on that. And then you're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So some glue here. You could do double-sided tape or a tape runner, although I'm not sure a tape runner would uh, hold very well. Whoops. Bring it in and bring in this other side too so it's on the inside. And then just hold it there while that adheres. So you can either take your fingers and go inside the box and push down or your bone folder and hold those two tabs that you've glued to the bottom of the box together. Just giving it a few seconds to catch. And now we're going to glue the sides of the box to the bottom of the box. So again, I take my Beacons 3-in-1 glue and I add maybe a quarter inch or a half inch in width along the two sides and a little bit underneath the tab right there.
Then I just pull up the bottom flap over the two of them and hold it in place for just a few seconds while it catches. And it's nice that I'm able to put my thumb and middle finger inside the box and hold it in place or again like I'm doing there turn it over put your hand inside and hold it there for a minute or two. So the only thing left to do is to trim off those two little tabs on the side. That helps the box close a little bit better and I do end up using a velcro dot to adhere it closed so that I'm able to give it to my son-in-law without him having to tear the box open. I appreciate each and every one of you. If there's anything I can do to help you with your crafting projects, please let me know. If you would like any of these supplies, please visit my 24-7 online store at wanettehewitt.stampinup.net and have a good evening. Please post any pictures that you might have of this project. I would love to see them. Good night.